Our worship continues on page 355 in the Red Book of Common Prayer. <clears throat> Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out, went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was also an exceedingly large city, three days' walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going uh, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty more days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God said what they did, saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Please stand and say antiphonally Psalm 62. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Truly I am old. He alone is my rock and my salvation. In God is my safety and my honor. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low state cannot be trusted. 
On the scales they are lighter than a breath. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery take no empty pride. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as, they, as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Our secret hymn is hymn number eight. passage from Jonah and the one that I just read from Mark's gospel make following God seem so easy, so automatic. The passage from Jonah reads, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time saying, 
Get up and go to Nineveh, the great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. And it says that Jonah got up and went to Nineveh. And in this morning's gospel passage, we read, As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net. And he called to them, Follow me and I'll make you fish for people. And Mark writes, they immediately they left their nets and followed him. And then Jesus went a little further and called James and John. And Mark writes that they too left everything and followed him. It sounds so simple and straightforward, automatic even. Passages like this remind me of phrases like, your wish is my command. Or Plato's, to know the good is to do the good. Plato sure didn't know me. (laughs) You see, it's not that easy. It's not automatic. And neither was it for Jonah or Jesus' disciples. Even Simon, whom we know more commonly as Peter. In the morning's reading from Jonah, there's a detail that's very important. The passage that we heard read begins with, the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. A second time. So who can tell me what happened the first time the word of the Lord came to Jonah? What did he do? He ran the other way. He tried to get as far away from God. But it's not possible to flee God. The psalmist says of the Lord, to the Lord, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you're there. If I make the grave my bed, you are also there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the outermost part of the sea, Even there, your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. Well, that's reassuring when you're needing the Lord or wanting the Lord to be near you. That probably wasn't a reassuring psalm for Jonah, who didn't want the Lord near him. You can run, but you cannot hide, Jonah. And the book of Jonah tells us that God pursued Jonah that first time he called him and Jonah didn't answer. So God pursues him to the outermost parts of the sea. It says that God even provided a large fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of that fish three days and three nights. It's like an extended youth timeout. (laughs) And it was in that timeout that Jonah had time to think and reevaluate his situation. And it was in the belly of that fish that Jonah came around to God's call. And so we read in this morning's passage that when the Lord came to Jonah a second time and called him, Jonah went. To know the good is not necessarily to do the good. More often, to know the good is to flee the good because the good is extremely demanding and requires the best out of us. And look at Peter, one of the very first disciples Jesus called, one of Jesus' inner three. You know, up on the mount when Jesus is transfigured, it's Peter, James, and John. When he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane, he takes with him Peter, James, and John. So Peter's in that top three. And in today's gospel lesson, Peter responds to Jesus' call to him with an unambiguous yes. He leaves his nets and every other aspect of his livelihood and follows Jesus. Immediately, no less. And later on, Peter is the first of the disciples to confess Jesus as the Messiah. Ah, but it's that same Peter who just a little bit later, after confessing Jesus as Messiah, gets it so wrong that Jesus rebukes him and says, what? Get behind me, Satan. 
Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Peter's the one that promises that even if all others forsake Jesus, he will not. And I believe he meant it with his whole heart. And it was the same Jesus who, before the cock crowed, had betrayed Jesus not once, not twice, but three times. So contrary to what you might infer from these two little passages this morning, following Jesus and obeying God's call is not often automatic nor immediate. One commentator I read stated that Mark's gospel is really a set of instructions on how to become a disciple of Jesus. And step one is hear Jesus' call, listen for it, and then get up and follow. And for anyone who knows anything about the 12 steps of AA, you know that step one or any of those steps can take a long time time to embrace. So it is here. And even when we hear Jesus calling us to follow him, to be his disciple, our discipleship, if we're honest, is often less than wholehearted. That's why I love Jonah. That's why I love Peter. They each had their failings, and God still called them. And called them again and again and again. Had the patience to keep calling until they got it. Keep calling until they followed him. Now at this point I really wanted to hold up a book that I love. But I'm still unpacking my office. And I couldn't find it for the life of me. (laughs) It's a book called Wisdom Distilled from the Daily. It's by uh, a Benedictine nun, Joan Chittister. And in her chapter on humility, I know this because I found the adult ed notes, so I could at least get that. In her book, on, a chapter on humility, in which she shares this little snippet. What do you do in the monastery, an ancient tale asks. Oh, we fall and we get up. We fall and we get up, an old monastic responds. Have you ever felt God calling you? your conscience calling you only to turn in the opposite direction and flee because the good you were being called to was tough and you didn't feel ready for it? Or you just maybe didn't want it? Have you ever tried to follow Jesus only to stumble and fall and just get it all messed up? Well, the good news is that you are not alone. We have all fallen and fallen short of the glory of God. The secret is not not to fall. The secret is to get up. And we have all denied Jesus on many occasions in one way or another. The secret is not to figure out how to be perfect and never deny Jesus. The secret is learning how to say you're sorry and then getting back up and getting to it again. And none of us knows all the answers The secret isn't to know all the answers. The secret is to be in community so you can search the scriptures and pray and talk to one another in order to hear and follow Jesus. So, Lynn and I have a house in Manchester. It's about a 20-minute ride. I almost was late to 8 o'clock this morning. (laughs)
And so Alice, being the artist that she is, an incredible builder, incredible fabric artist, um, she had the women make the pick one of the stations that they were connecting to, and then make uh, a, an art presentation of it. And then also to write a brief meditation on that station from their own And she was going to do a Stations of the Cross where folks from St. Max were invited to come with the women, but the Lord said, no, you can't do it together. And so we went at night to see this. And I'm telling you, it was profound. And, I mean, all of it was just so profound. Um, but one station really stood out for me. And th I, ha I have this information because uh, it was shortly thereafter that I went up and became the rector at St. Paul's at White River. And that first Lent, guess what I invited to do a play? Alice Roberts. And guess what I asked her to bring? Those stations. And so I asked her at the end of that quiet day, because we put them up uh, around the church. And that church didn't have a station with the cross, but it had one there. And it was so profound having a quiet day in the sanctuary with those up that I asked her, can we keep them up for worship tomorrow? And I will fly them back to you. And she said yes. And so I have this information. It was so, so profound. And this one uh, station was uh, Jesus falling for the third time. And the woman wrote how she was back in prison for the third time, okay? And she said, how profound and true the falling process, even for Jesus. He was hurt and fell as often as one would in human form. Although the Lord did not deserve the persecution he was subjected to, like many of us, we walk and fall toward the truth that will set us free. We walk and fall toward the truth that will set us free. The Lord understands how and why we stumble. This is the difficulty and pain in our individual journey because it is always a learning experience walking toward salvation. That's what we're doing here too. Walking and falling toward the truth that will set us free. Walking toward salvation for ourselves personally and for the sake of the world that all may be free. Thank God that God keeps calling us a second time, a third time, however, it, however long it takes until we get it. Thank God we have Jesus who has been there, who understands and calls us anyway. Thank God we have each other to make God's truth understandable when we aren't quite getting it yet. And thank God we have each other to help us back up when we do fall. Amen. Let us now stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358. We believe in one God.
Please join me in the prayers of the people found, uh, Form 6, found on page 392. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, For the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, and justice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who see the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, Rob, our bishop. Nancy, our rector, in the diocesan cycle of prayer, Holy Cross, where the Reverend David Ferner, vicar, and all bishops and other ministers, all who serve God and his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, for those for whom our prayers for healing and encouragement are asked today, Lou, Linda, Kate, Ellen, Joe, Judy, Frank, Louise, Judy, Eleanor, Jane, Cynthia and Jim, Lou, Kay, Ed, Carolyn, Amy, Kareen, Barb, John, Bill, Ella Rose, Mary, George, Diana, Deborah, John, Sophia, and Judith Ann, and Doris. For all who face the fallout of alcohol, drug, or physical abuse, or love someone who does. For healing within ourselves and for those in our thoughts and hearts today. Also for the speedy, safety and speedy return of those deployed in the armed services and for comfort for their families, for all who pray for peace worldwide, and for assurance and blessing to those looking for work and for their families. Hear us, Lord. Hear us, great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For all known to us who celebrate birthdays this week, including Chris Calhoun, David Neiman, Paul, Pauline Kroller, Pat Soule, Tony Moore, Jack Kennerson, Nancy Clark, Jane Doherty, and Jeff Osborne. For those known to us celebrating anniversaries this week, including Natalie and Chip Center. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for those who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, especially for Nancy Van Cleek, and from our Book of Remembrance, the flowers on the altar are given in loving memory of Paula Paradis Poirier. We pray for all who have died, Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray, trust in you. we pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand for peace.
so we ask God's blessing especially upon this food for those who will get to receive them because of our efforts, especially for those young people who will be sustained over the weekend because of this food. As we are nourished spiritually, may they always be nourished physically. Amen. We continue with Eucharistic Prayer B, found on page 367. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. through the prophets, and above all, in the Word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ. And bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses.
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. for the people of God. Please come.
page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is 657.